Today I'm going to present you 20 hot takes about Rockstar games, but the takes will go from cold to extremely hot. Number 1. Rockstar makes good games. I told you we're going to progress from cold to extremely hot. Number 2. Bully is still underrated. I mean this game has become a cult classic but gets barely any talk around the corner. What could be the reason for that? Maybe Rockstar's own fault. Number 3. Another hot take about Bully is that a Bully spin-off would have been better than a sequel. I loved Bully Story, there's no doubt about that. But what I liked more is the setting and the open world system of it. Another perspective in the same world would have been awesome. Maybe someone with a different personality than Jimmy. Number 4. Rockstar is getting greedy day by day. I mean, just look at the price of Red Dead Redemption port. Yeah, not even freaking remaster or remake. Just a port for PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. Not only they are charging outrageous price for a port, but they didn't even bother to release it for PC. I mean, this gotta be top 10 betrayals of all time. Number 5. Rockstar Games is lazy. Just look at this chart. Do you noticing something? They stopped giving damn about anything that isn't Red Dead or GTA 5. I know they want to make money, but it's a lazy approach. They are just hindering their potential by releasing a brand new game in every 5 year. That gap is huge. By Repsect, we should have gotten a GTA 7 by now. Number 6. GTA Plus is stupid, and so is everyone buying it, respectfully. You know some will say that it only costs $6 and you must be broke AF for not buying it. But let's be honest. There is simply no reason to buy GT Plus. I mean, what value does it even provide? Some cars and stuff, which is even in-game and for only one game. Heck, Game Pass and EA Pass is miles better than this. Stop kidding yourself. Number 7. Rockstar's attempt at an Arthur and Sadie romantic angle in RDR2 didn't quite hit the mark. To me, they were more compelling as friends who supported each other without the need for a love angle. Their bond felt deeper as comrades in arms and confidants, making the game's story even more remarkable. There were hints and attempts here and there to show some romantic scope, but there's no need for that. It just don't look good if you ask me. Number 8. When it comes to the GTA IV expansions, the Lost and Damned outshone The Ballad of Gay Tony by a mile. Let's break it down. Lost and Damned had that raw, gritty vibe. It took us into the gritty world of biker gangs, where brotherhood meant something. Johnny Klibitz was a character you could relate to, with his struggles and loyalty. Now, don't get me wrong. The Ballad of Gay Tony was a blast with its flashy clubs and crazy missions, but it felt like it was trying too hard to be over the top and funny. Luis Lopez was cool but he didn't have that depth that Johnny brought to the table. In The Lost and Damned, you felt the weight of every decision, the consequences of loyalty, and the struggle to survive in Liberty City. The story had heart, and it hit you right in the feels. So yeah, while Gay Tony was a wild ride, The Lost and Damned delivered a more grounded emotional experience that left a lasting impact. It's not about flashiness, it's about substance, and that's why it's the superior expansion. Number nine. A lot of GTA 4 missions sucked. Now, don't get me wrong, I love GTA 4. But let's be honest here, some of those missions felt straight up stupid. I mean, we're talking about a game that prides itself on its gritty, realistic narrative. And then suddenly, you find yourself in these missions that Number seem 10. more like an absurd GTA comedy show GTA 4 characters making drama. cameo appearances in it's GTA 5. It's like the developers 5. couldn't decide whether they Honestly, wanted you to be a hardened horrible. Or the star Take of Johnny Klebitz, for instance. The toughest nails from biker from the Lost and Damned DLC. Ambiguous decisions to now, don't get me wrong. That had no fun. I understand that GTA like 5 wanted to establish to Trevor as this undetermined to get themselves killed. But was it really necessary like to kill off invincible. Johnny in such a brutal way? I'm all for a good mix of tones. It felt like a game. cheap move just to emphasize but GTA Trevor's 4 craziness. Sometimes felt like it had an Johnny was a crisis. beloved character from GTA 4. It's like 4. it couldn't decide whether it wanted it to be like a serious crime epic or a wacky parody tossed in aside for shock value. Still, GTA 4 sure, is a masterpiece. You could argue that even it was though some missions felt GTA, little sucked, but it felt unnecessary. It was more of a "look how insane Trevor is" moment rather than a meaningful narrative choice. Number eleven. Midnight racing games are still incredibly underappreciated. You see, I've been scrolling through the comments section of my videos, and a lot of you have been suggesting that I give these midnight racing games another shot. And you know what? I took your advice to heart. I spent a solid week diving back into these titles. And boy, oh boy, did my opinion do a complete 180. Now, for those who might not be familiar midnight racing games, they don't always get the spotlight they deserve, but trust me, there's something uniquely thrilling about tearing through the neon-lit streets, pushing your car to its limits while evading the cops. 
Sure, we have our Forzas, Need for Speeds, and Gran Turismos that dominate the racing game scene. But midnight racing games offer a gritty, underground experience that you just won't find in those mainstream titles. Remember games like Midnight Club or Tokyo Extreme Racer? These gems embraced the rebellious spirit of illegal racing, and they did it with style, the killer soundtracks that often accompany these games. Nothing quite sets the mood like pumping bass and adrenaline pumping beats as you weave through traffic at breakneck speeds. Number 12. Max Payne 2 was the best Max Payne game. Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne had something truly special. It continued the noir-inspired, hard-boiled detective story of the first game and managed to deepen Max's character even further. The narrative was tightly woven, with more intricate plot twists than a classic detective novel. The atmosphere in Max Payne 2 was undeniably dark and moody, capturing the essence of film noir. The rainy, neon-soaked streets of New York City provided the perfect backdrop for Max's grim journey. Now let's talk about gameplay. Max Payne 2 refined the bullet time mechanics from the first game, making the action even more satisfying. The shoot-dodge mechanic allowed for stylish and strategic combat maneuvers. One of the standout aspects of Max Payne 2 was its attention to detail and interactivity. The game world felt alive, with characters reacting to Max's presence and even the smallest objects being interactive. This level of detail created a truly immersive experience. Max Payne 2's hauntingly beautiful score by Kartsi Hataka and Kimo Kajasto perfectly complemented the dark and melancholic tone of the game. Max Payne 3 had its strengths, with improved visuals, a change of setting, and some fantastic gunplay. But there's something about the classic, brooding atmosphere of Max Payne 2. Number 13. GTA games will never be remembered primarily for their stories because they revolutionized the open-world aspect of gaming. When you think of Grand Theft Auto, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it the intricate storytelling or the vast, immersive open worlds they create? For most gamers, it's the latter. GTA games have been groundbreaking in the way they've crafted these sprawling, living, breathing cities. They've set the bar incredibly high for open-world gameplay. The freedom to roam, explore, and cause chaos has often overshadowed the main storylines. GTA has had some memorable characters and plot twists, but they tend to play second fiddle to the sheer sandbox fun these games offer. Whether it's stealing a fighter jet or just cruising through the virtual streets, the freedom GTA provides is unparalleled. GTA stories are definitely great. Absolutely no one can deny that, but they will be overshadowed. Number 14. Michael DeSanta is the best GTA protagonist of all time. Why? Because he defies the usual stereotypes of old American dream chasers or street hustlers. In a world filled with criminal antiheroes and streetwise hustlers, Michael is a breath of fresh air. He's the last guy you'd expect to be the lead character in a Grand Theft Auto game, a middle-aged retired bank robber, and a family man at that. But that's precisely what makes him so compelling. He's a man trying to navigate the complexities of his dysfunctional family while struggling with the mundanity of suburban life. He's living the so-called American dream on the surface, but it's far from perfect. His character feels more original and relatable because he's not driven solely by greed, revenge, or streetwise survival. Instead, he's a man in search of something more, something meaningful, I mean, he got the unique factor with him while also not being poorly written. Number 15. Jack Marston would be a terrible protagonist for Red Dead Redemption 3. I know, I know, many of you love the idea of playing as John Marston's son, but hear me out. By the time Jack Marston comes of age and gets into action, the Wild West era is essentially over. So, what exactly would a Red Dead Redemption 3 starring Jack Marston look like? Are we going to witness him battling outlaws in a modernizing world? Will he confront new challenges, like industrialization, World War I, and the changing landscape of America? Here's the thing. The appeal of the Red Dead series lies in its immersive, gritty portrayal of the dying Wild West. It's a time when honor, freedom, and survival clashed in a harsh and unforgiving frontier. But as Jack's era begins, those elements are fading away, replaced by a more organized and less lawless society. You could argue that Jack's struggle to adapt to this changing world could be interesting, but it might not capture the essence of Red Dead. So while Jack Marston undoubtedly has his place in the Red Dead Redemption universe, making him the protagonist of the next installment could risk losing the very essence that defines the series, the dying Wild West itself. 
There are undoubtedly other intriguing stories to be told in this richly detailed world, but Jax might not be the right fit for the main stage. Number 16. We will never get an L.A. noir sequel. And the reason is simple. It can't generate the kind of money that Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto, especially their online versions, can. L.A. Noir was a unique departure from Rockstar Games' usual open-world, action-packed titles. It was a detective thriller set in post. World War II Los Angeles, where players solved crimes and navigated a complex narrative. The game was well-received critically, praised for its storytelling and innovative facial animation technology. However, when we talk about the gaming industry today, it's all about blockbuster titles and, more importantly, ongoing revenue through online multiplayer modes or microtransactions. Red Dead Online and Grand Theft Auto Online have become massive cash cows for Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive. These online modes generate millions of dollars through in-game purchases, and they continue to receive regular updates and content additions. In contrast, Noir's gameplay doesn't easily lend itself to this kind of monetization. It's a single-player experience with a finite story, and while it offers downloadable content, it's not the same as an ever-expanding online world. In the end, it's all about dollars and cents for game publishers. While L.A. Noir had its moment in the sun and attracted a dedicated fan base, it simply can't compete with the financial juggernauts that are Red Dead and GTA. So, as much as fans might want it, the cold reality is that a sequel to L.A. Noir might never see the light of day because it can't match the money-making potential of Rockstar's other franchises. Number 17. Grand Theft Auto 6 will likely be priced at over $100 for at least the first six months of its release. Why, you ask? Because Rockstar Games knows the demand for this title is going to be through the roof, and they believe people won't be able to resist, even at that price point. Rockstar understands this, and they're aware of the pent-up excitement surrounding GTA 6. They've likely invested a substantial amount of time, effort, and money into making it a game that surpasses all expectations. So why not capitalize on this fervor? By pricing the game at over $100 for the first six months, Rockstar can maximize their profits while still ensuring that diehard fans will happily fork over the cash. It's a business strategy that's been used successfully in other industries, and there's no doubt it could work in the gaming world as well. Of course, this doesn't mean everyone will be thrilled about the price tag. There will undoubtedly be some grumbling and complaints, but in the end, the lure of GTA 6 will be too strong for many to resist. Number 18. Red Harlow, the protagonist of Red Dead Revolver, had the best origin story out of all three protagonists in the Red Dead Redemption series. Now don't get me wrong, he might not be the best protagonist overall, but his origin story had the potential to make him the standout character of the series. Red Harlow's story is one of tragedy, revenge, and redemption. He witnesses his parents' murder at a young age, setting him on a path of vengeance against the ruthless Governor Griffin and his henchmen. This quest for justice is deeply personal, and players can't help but empathize with Red's burning desire to make those responsible pay. What sets Red apart is that his story is pure Old West. It captures the essence of the time with its lawlessness, greed, and unforgiving landscapes. Red's journey is a quintessential Western tale, and his character is a reflection of the harsh world he inhabits. Now, why might Red's origin story be the best? Well, it's all about potential. While John Marston and Arthur Morgan are fantastic characters in their right, their stories often get entangled in complex narratives involving the changing times and their roles within their respective gangs. Red's story, on the other hand, is straightforward and focused. It's a classic revenge tale with a clear objective, and it allows players to fully immerse themselves in the Old West setting. With a bit more development and a modern-day remake, Red Harlow could have been the ultimate embodiment of the Old West's rugged individualism. Number 19. Take-Two is terrible for Rockstar. Take-Two is a publicly traded company, and you know what that means. They're all about those profits and making their shareholders happy. While that's great for business, it's not always great for quality. We've seen it happen with the rise of microtransactions and in-game purchases in games like GTA Online and Red Dead Online. Sure, those microtransactions make a boatload of money for Take-Two, but they've also made gaming experiences feel like a never-ending grind at times. You're pressured to open your wallet to enjoy everything a game has to offer fully, and that can really take the fun out of it. Then there's the whole modding debacle. Take-Two's been pretty strict with mods, 
especially if they mess with their online money-making schemes. This has rubbed the modding community. Number 20. This is going to be the hottest, but I'm going to say it. GTA 5 should have won Game of the Year in 2013 over The Last of Us. I know Last of Us story is very ahead, but the game is not just about story. I know I'm an open advocate for good stories, but what GTA did back then was spectacular. I mean, so smooth character switching and so diverse world. Last of Us is good, but it isn't revolutionary by any standard. It feels like a very good movie, but it doesn't feel one of the best games ever. I love it, but GTA 5 respectfully should have won Game of the Year. I'm not pissed, but I think it should have happened. So these were 20 hot takes about Rockstar games, and I know you might not agree with a lot of these. So make sure to comment down your opinion.